Hey everyone, Reflected here, and today I'd like to quickly show you the ins and outs of night flying in DCS using the de Havilland Mosquito. It's not so much about the takeoff and landing technique itself, which is pretty similar to what I described in my previous tutorial, it's more about the peculiarities of night flying versus daytime flying. The difference is wait for it, night and day. Yeah, sorry about that. Some of these procedures are not required or set up in DCS by default, but you will need to be familiar with them in V for Victory, my upcoming mosquito campaign. Otherwise, there may be dire consequences such as you ending up being shut down by friend of fire. First of all, you need to be able to see. I recommend setting the mission date to a day when there's a full moon. It's pretty bright and illuminates the landscape quite well. For night missions, I also recommend you crank up your gamma settings until you have sufficient visibility. You can set it back to your preferred value afterwards. I noticed that many players set it way low. I personally wouldn't go below 2.0 even in daytime. Between 3 and 3.5 should be fine for night flying. Now let's light up the cockpit. With the master switch off, you can use the flashlight by pressing left alt L. I think it's a pretty cool feature. You can point it anywhere using your mouse. You can also use the emergency floodlight rheostat, which has its own power source in case things go really south. Let's keep it for emergencies though. After you turn on the master switch, you can use four floodlight rheostats to light up the cockpit. Two here on the left side and two more here on the right. The brighter you set them, the better you'll see inside the cockpit, but the more they will destroy your night vision so I recommend setting them as dim as possible. There's another rheostat here on the navigator side, as well as this one above the radios. What I recommend using instead is the UV light. It illuminates the needles and markings of your instruments and they would glow in the dark. Easy to read without killing your night vision. Keep it in mind that it takes a while for it to turn on. Then you can adjust the intensity here on the left side. Make sure to turn on your nav lights before engine starts so everyone stays clear of your propellers. Make sure you dim the radio lights and also set the gun sight as dim as possible. Otherwise you won't be able to see the enemy aircraft. Once ready to taxi, you can turn on your landing lights, either both or just the one on the pilot side to be a little less conspicuous. Keep in mind they take a few seconds to extend. Okay, we are at the end of the runway, ready for takeoff. In order to get takeoff clearance, we need to flash our ID letter in the color of the day using our recognition lights. We do that to keep radio silence as much as possible. You can find the control box here on the right hand side of the cockpit. Let's say today's color is amber. That's what the latest notification from the air ministry says. You'll find this in your briefing. So switch the color to amber and then flip the downward light switch up to Morse. This here is for the upward lights, but those are not installed on our version of the Mosquito. Our aircraft is YHV. YH is the code letters of 21 Squadron and V is our unique ID letter. That's dot 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 dash. Don't worry, I'll give you a Nibor page with the Morse alphabet in my campaign. Let's go ahead and flash it using the Morse key, which I have bound to my keyboard. In real life, the same letter would be flashed back in response by the towering green. But in DCS that's not possible, so I set up a green flare instead. We acknowledge the clearance by switching the recognition lights to steady. And we can go ahead and take off. We're airborne. Let's turn off the landing lights, but keep the nav lights and recognition lights on. As you circle the field while the squadron takes off, it helps them form up on you. However, as you set course and leave the airfield, don't forget to turn the recognition lights off. Then, as you cross the English coastline, turn off the nav lights as well. 
We are on our way home now, approaching England, and we must make sure that we don't get shut down by our own night fighters. We could turn our nav lights on, but hey, German planes have the same kind of nav lights, so it's not really a life insurance policy. That's why they invented resin lamps. It doesn't have anything to do with the material that you put over the glassing when shaping the surfboard. It's an abbreviation of restricted intensity lights. These are small lights on the trailing edge of each wing, almost only visible from behind, and the color was changed periodically as per the latest notification from the Air Ministry. The color could only be set on the ground, so you don't have to worry about that. You have to turn these on when flying over Britain at altitudes higher than 5,000 feet or over the seas around Britain at altitudes higher than 9,500 feet except if you are a single engine aircraft, a twin engine night fighter in the process of intercepting, a light sender, a flying boat or a biplane. But we are none of these so let's make sure we turn them on in case a friendly night fighter gets on our tail. Then he'll know we're friendlies. As soon as you cross the English coastline, turn on the nav lights too. In case something happens, we still get attacked from the air or by our own AA, searchlights. There's the last resort. We need to remember the letter of the day from our briefing and flash it in the color of the day using the recognition lights. Then they'll quickly realize their mistake. Well, hopefully. Let's say it's the letter F in Ember dot dot dash dot there against friendly night fighters you can also use the type F transmitter it's a simple lamp fitted in the tail of the aircraft which transmits an infrared beam invisible to the naked eye all night fighters should have a specially designed telescope in the cockpit that enables them to see this IR beam it's visible up to a range of one and a half to two miles with a cone of 12 and a half degrees either side of the line of flight. Now we need to find the airfield in the dark. We're going to land at Manston and I set up a beacon in the mission editor at the runway threshold, transmitting at 397 kilohertz. We also know that the runway heading is 112 magnetic, so all we have to do is to overfly the beacon on a heading of 112 at an altitude of 1000 feet AGL and that's our initial. In my radios and navigation tutorial I explained how to tune into beacons so I'm just gonna quickly flip the switches now. Power on, T1154 to standby, R1155 to DF direction finding, volume up, set the frequency Good. We hear the code MZN, so we know we're listening to Manston. Volume down, mode to visual, set the sensitivity to high, and now we just need to put the center line on the intersection of those two needles to fly toward the beacon. We're approaching the airfield on the runway's heading at 1000 feet. It's quite visible, no need to follow the beacon anymore. Let's make sure our supercharger is set to mod, so low gear. Radiators open, RPM to 2850. We're not gonna do a high speed low pass and pull up like during the day, but we have to do something else instead. It's pretty dark and despite our nav lights being on, the people on the ground can't really see that it's a mosquito and they might think we're a straight ankle. In that case, they may very well open fire at us. To prevent that from happening, as we fly downwind, we flash our ID letter in the color of the day using our downward recognition lights. It's still V, the color is still amber. So again, you switch your downward recognition lights color to amber, switch the function to Morse, and tap the code for the letter V, that is dot 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 dash. The tower answers with a green light, and we acknowledge the clearance by turning the recognition lights to steady. We can also turn on the landing lights, either both or just the port one on the pilot side. The landing is pretty much the same as during the daytime. 150 miles an hour as you turn on final, then drop full flaps, reduce your speed to 125, and go for a nice and gentle touchdown.
There we go. We're down. Time to hit the sack. Once again, these identification procedures are not part of the core game, but my campaign will be set up in a way that if you fail to remember them, you'll risk being shot at by your own Archie, War Knight Fighters. I'm sure many players will overlook this detail in the briefing or on the kneeboard, but they will pay dearly for their lack of attention. Imagine completing an oboe mission only to be shot down by AAA or Manston. What a shame. Alright, good night everyone. Thanks a lot for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe in order to stay up to date about V for Victory, my upcoming mosquito campaign. Stay tuned, see ya!